Hey, and welcome to VFX Tutors. I'm Josh, and I'm back again with another tutorial. In this series, we're going to be continuing with our VFX core skills for beginners. So in our previous one, we um, did some very basic look dev and created a, a simple look dev three-point lighting rig so we can apply our shaders and just like, check them out. So in this one, we're going to actually bring our asset into our shot and light it to sort of match our backplate, our footage. So this is mostly going to be using our HDRI and how we can make the most out of our HDRIs. And we'll also sort of reveal why we use um, chrome balls and gray balls. Um, so if that's ever been a wonder for you and one you never written, never known why uh, you see them sometimes, it'll, this will explain it all. But yeah, um, it's going to be a very simple lighting tutorial and we're just going to get it in shot and we're going to try and match it as close to the plate as possible. So yeah, um, the first thing that we will do is actually make sure our HDRI is graded to our neutral grade in Resolve. So yeah, we'll open up Resolve first, sort that out, then um, we'll bring, open up Maya. So if you've enjoyed these tutorials, don't forget to hit that like button and um, subscribe. It, it really does help. And um, thank you for all your support. It's um, it's really great to hear uh, your comments and stuff. So yeah, let's get going. Okay, so I've opened up Resolve and the first thing that we wanna do is click on our media at the bottom. And if you remember right at the start where we transcoded our footage, um, we probably, if I was doing this, I would have done all my HDRI and done it all at the same time. But because we did it in a different order, it would be a bit silly to do the HDRI before we had actually processed it. So, I'm just going to go to my HDRI. And I believe it's in here. On set, lighting, HDRI. And we've got the processed HDRI that we've done. So I'm just going to click into here. And you can see that this is already in a linear color space. So if we go to edit, we can um, let's go to our color sorry uh, where is our this why you probably also want to make sure that your uh, checkerboard is a little bit clearer <laughs> um, it's not particularly great so what we can do, just so we can see it a bit clearer, let's just quickly add a LUT to it. And we, will, we will remove this, so let's just turn it to sRGB for now so we can see it. Cool. So I think we'll get a, an okay-ish sample from this, but ideally this is a bit too small. We really want it to be much closer, and that's my fault. Um, so you kind of really want to make sure that your color chart is close enough in because it will just be more accurate. With this sort of sample size, we won't get the most accurate sort of uh, representation of the color. So what I've done, I've just select it, uh, gone to here and selected color chart. And I'm just going to drag these corners over to the color chart. And this is not the best because ideally we really want this a lot closer, but we should be able to get something fairly okay from it. It's not the end of the world. As long as we sort of, because you can sort of see here, we've got some color bleeding. So we want to make sure that we at least get these sample uh, squares into the cleanest parts of the checkerboard. If we push that up and we just check through them all and they all look pretty good so we can bring this up so obviously this would be a lot easier if um the checkerboard was closer but that was my fault <laughs> cool so we've, we've lined it up and yeah and all we need to do is go to our color make sure we're on the right one and i actually 
think maybe last time I said I used the wrong, oh, not the actual right colors. I think it was supposed to be the actual classic because they are slightly different, but I think I used the legacy. But either way, we need to make sure that we use the same one. Okay, so now I've sort of lined this up, I need to remove that LUT. Sorry, don't need to do that. I can just go LUT, no LUT selected. And I've got the lined up. So now we need to go to here. And what we did last time, we just matched with what we know. So our source gamma is linear. And we want our target gamma to be linear as well. And our color space, let's put it in aces. Because that's what we did last time. It's, we're not going to go into a huge amount of uh, aces. It's just going to keep it really basic. If we select match, we can see that it's slightly changed which is why I think maybe we should have used the classic because it actually changes a lot less. So I got a feeling that's maybe why um, they're not matching, but I'm not too sure. But as long as we keep them the same, it should be fine. Cool. So we've done that. And don't forget, when we do this, you can do this in Nuke. Um, you'll have way more resolution but because this is free we can only we can only max out at 4k or uhd so the one other thing that we've got here is that we're going to have clipped highlights here and i'm not sure it's really going to matter so much we can reduce the gain try and bring some of this back This is going to be from. This is going to be from probably our oh, super bright parts, but I'm not too bothered because I'm not. I'm using this for lighting, so if it is clipped, I'm not too bothered. So it's up to you whether if you want to keep this, but we can. Oh, let's not change the sat rate, saturation. Reset that. can just bring this gain down and obviously this will change the amount of um, exposure in the shot as you can see up in the thumbnail that means we'll have some more more um, details in the in the rear highlights but you can see the, the difference it makes it's very minimal um, and I'm probably actually just gonna leave it as it is and if it's causing me problems um, I'll come back and do it again. So I'm just going to go over to deliver because I don't want to sp spend ages on this. I um, just want to get this done quickly. And I'm just going to go to, I'm going to call this, uh, I'm just going to call it hey, bird box, HDRI underscore grade V01 dot. I'm going to go to browse. And no, not brushes, bird box. And we'll put it in the same place, even though we're working in two files. But process HGRI. Cool, we'll save it in there. I'm going to save it as an EXR. And obviously, our resolution is going to be a lot lower in this now. But I'm not using it for reflections. This is almost just going to be a color pusher. Um, so it's effectively going to half, almost half the resolution, but um, I'm not really that bothered for it because we're not using it for reflections. So I'm going to change this to ACES AP1. I think that's the correct one. And gamma is linear. Or ACES CC, we'll just leave it in ACES CC for now. We could, we, most people are using ACES CG, but like I'm not setting up the. And these are just tags anyway; they're not actually affecting anything. So I'm just going to force to the highest quality. EXR file, and we'll just change this to four 
and even though we're just doing one frame, it should be fine. Let's go back to our edit and make sure it is one frame first, because we don't want to be. Doesn't matter so much if it's a couple frames. Obviously, it's going to have some black bars on there, but um, it doesn't show up in the render, so don't worry too much about it. Um, it's only if we're doing reflections and stuff, so that would be. But black comes. Um, it doesn't show up. Cool, so I'm not going to carry on babbling on, so I'm just going to add to my render key. Select render all. Hopefully, that shouldn't take too long. And we're pretty much done. So I'm now going to open up Maya and go to our layout scene that we created. So in the layout tutorial, we, um, it was almost the layout. Oh no, I think it was the, yeah, it was the layout one. And we did some post vis in a previous one. So where is our layout group? So that'll probably be in a layout. So we've got our layout in here. Let's deselect that. I don't want to select that. And we've got our post viz or pre viz from here just to sort of plan it out. And if we go to our panels, we've got our render camera. So we can see what's going to happen. And it's all working really nicely. We've got our scan in there. And we've also got our reference cam. Which should have a back plate on it. So I'm just going to select the camera here. To edit. Image plate. Okay, depth is at 4500. So let's change that to 1. And we have our balls. So we can use this for our reference. And this is what we'll pretty much... This is what we'll use for our first sort of initial lighting. So we'll create some balls. And we'll line them up and we'll use our... Macbeth chart, and we'll try and match this with our HDRI as closely as we can. So, so what I'm going to do is just create some balls. I'm going to select sphere. Just going to bring this up and out. And it doesn't matter so much, but I know that I know that my balls are twenty centimeter diameter. So they should be a 10 centimeter radius, because radius is half. And I'm just going to duplicate both of those. And it's just so I can get a, a nice lineup of what it is. And, and it's very unlikely that you'll, you'll need to go to this length, but it's, it's nice to be able to do it. So I need to change my uh, image plane so I can actually see them. Change my alpha gain to 0 0.7. Cool. And we can see, we can line them up here. Then if I tear off a copy. But I'm actually just going to line them as close as I can. To the plate because they're luckily they're spheres they can pretty much it should be pretty easy to line up I'm gonna press three on that so it's uh, matching and because I know the size of it as well that really does help but like I say this is um in fact I'm actually gonna delete that one and they should be exactly the same size and if I press control D bring that across Cool. And this really does help with um, lining up our, getting our HDRI orientated the correct way, because it makes quite a significant difference when it's, it's the wrong way around, basically. So we've got that, and I believe that this is approximately A4 size, or I know that these are four centimeters squared. So I'm just going to create a plane. 
but we have also rendered this out as UHD. So I'm not too I'm not too bothered about this being the correct size. Or generally the correct place. It's mostly the spheres that I want to be as close as possible. So I'm just gonna roughly scale this up. And it's sort of in the rightish place. Cool, so we've lined that up. So the first thing that I want to do is select I can never name this sphere Chrome Light Probe. And I'll rename this Grey Light Probe. And if you've made your own, like I have, I know that this grey here isn't 50% or 18% um, photographic grey, which is oh, fine um, because we have it here on the colour chart. But you do need to um, let, if you're passing this off to someone, do make them know that this isn't exactly calibrated to the right colour. But as long as you've got your Macbeth chart in there, um, they should be able to match it, uh, be able to check on your chart. And it, I'm pretty sure it's the four from the right. Um, but anyway, so yeah, if you've made your own, it's fine. But make sure you let them know that that's not uh, photographic grey. So I am just going to get rid of that for now, I don't need it. I'm going to right click and add new material. And then go to Arnold, Arnold Standard Surface. I'm just going to go to Presets. And I'm just going to go to Chrome. And replace all selected. So I'm actually going to... Um, I will actually leave that one for now, then we'll do that one afterwards. In fact, I just need to quickly check what... In fact, we'll put that at 50, the, the correct uh, grey. So we'll just right-click, add new material, Arnold, standard surface, and we'll just call this uh, mid-grey. Probably should have called this one chrome. Cool. So I'm going to go to my colour. And I'm going to change this to RGB to 0 to 255. And if I remember rightly, it's 1118 for middle grey. And I'm just going to get rid of all the specular as well, because we just don't need it. And for this one, I'm going to call it chart. And I'm going to right click, add new material. Arnold, yeah, standard surface. Let's get rid of the specular. Let's go to our color file and I think it was the last ones. Cool. And you can see we've got this and it's in a UHD format. So uh, let's rotate that round. <laughs> Scaled it the wrong way. Um, don't worry too much about that. Let's go to our and let's just try and match these squares up as best we can. Just about C. Lining up. See, this is not the best. Probably 
probably should have just measured this out the right size. And I'm just faffing around. Okay, so let's actually... Um, that should be fine. For now, just bring that up above it. I'm actually just going to hide that for now as well. Cool, so... Ooh, enough faffing around. Let's... Um, let's hide. Oh, don't need to hide it, it's in a group. So what we need to do is bring in our light. So I'm going to bring in my Skydome light. And I'm actually going to bring in my first one so we can compare. So let's go to color, file, Process HDRI, and we have our original HDRI. Most of the time, if they've shot right, they should be pretty close anyway. You shouldn't have a um, a huge disparity between them if they've been shot right. So sometimes it's absolutely fine. So I'm just going to turn it off on my camera, and I'm also going to. Select my camera. Just turn my image plane off for now. Ooh, let's get hide that. In fact, I need my image plane on my camera because I need to compare it. How silly. Bring that up. And we will click render. Arnold, render view. Hopefully nothing should go wrong. Before we do this, let's just double check that our color space is coming to raw. We didn't put it under Aces CG because we didn't have that at the time. I don't know where that's come from actually. Um, oh well. And we'll just click play. Hopefully that should uh, start loading. It might take a while because it's quite a large HDRI. But, um, oh, here it goes. It always takes longer for the first one because it's got to make the TX files. Cool. So we've got our balls in here, and we can see there's we got some mismatch in lighting here. So first thing that we kind of want to do is rotate it. In fact, let's just minimize this. So the reason for these, first of all, let's ignore the gray ball. We want to, because obviously this is the position of the camera roughly, and this is the position of our HDRI currently. So we can see that our tree is on this side, but it looks like it's on this side, so it looks like we're completely the wrong way around. Maybe we can go to 20. So now we can sort of see this shape here. Maybe we can, uh, let's just 2D pan zoom out, minimize that. And our goal here is to match our CG one with our onset one. Let's go the wrong way then, so. And because we've got this pretty close, in position, like, let's see actually how much difference it makes if I do translate this down and pull this out. 
it does actually make quite a, a, a big difference being in, in, the wrong, in the wrong place. So we can see that we've got such a close representation of the, the HGRI now. And maybe let's, uh, let me just pause this. Let's put that back to Oh no, what am I doing? Let's put these back down to here because I actually want those in that position. And let's actually offset. It makes sense to leave these where they are. And let's offset our image. So X and Y. So let's see how far one does. So it's actually a huge number will make it be quite far offset. So we've offset this up. So now our CG balls. Hold on, let's just double check that. Yeah. 0 0.1. So we've pushed that up. And let's just keep pushing up to point two. Cool. So now we've pushed up. All we've done is just pushed up our uh, image plane, so we can actually see. Let's hide that color chart. We'll we'll do that color chart properly in a minute. That's a a mess. Sorry. So. With the un we need to go back to our HGRI and let's rotate this round. So we're trying to match this as close as we can. And we should get pretty good result. You can see we've kind of got this, maybe a little bit slightly too far. And we can see we've got these branches here. It's not exactly 100, but we can sort of see the spacing here. Because we've got the color chart in here as well that we can see that. We can see that it's a reasonably decent spacing. And everything around is it's looking, it's looking really close. And I'm, I'm pretty happy with that sort of position. So, and if we look at our grey ball here, let's actually turn up our samples because that's so, uh, we don't need to render the whole thing. So let's region that. And I know this is not 50% grey, but we can see that the sort of shadow cast is very similar. And this is just with the ungraded HGRI. So what I'm going to do now is just swap it out for the graded one. And hopefully this should match a lot closer. Although in reality, this is already really close. So we might not even, we might not even notice a difference, but we can see that this has got the bars on. So it's just because I used a resolve. And what we'll do, we'll just snapshot that. I'm just going to render update full scene you can see it's it's such a slight change and obviously we can see the the tops and the bottoms in there but that doesn't that does, only adds to reflections but um, you could effectively paint that out so we can sort of see our greens are like it's it's matching it feels like it's matching a lot closer now obviously there's quite a bit of haze in um because this is uh, in the evening, so there's probably quite a bit of haze in this as well. And the ball's not like super mirror, but... And we can see that the changes, it's changed quite a lot on here as well. So this is why I'm saying that this isn't really 50% grey. So if we just uh, snapshot that, and we can look between the two, 
And obviously we've got those bits we can paint out, but because mostly between the two, you can see that this one's got a lot more blue. It's, it's definitely got, you can see some way more magenta in there as well, but it's, it's, it's a bit closer. Obviously our gray balls off. It looks pretty, cl it, it looks pretty close in both. Both have got pros and cons. I find, I feel that the, the ground and I feel like the ground is matching a lot closer in this one, but the sky, the ground, I feel like the ground is closing in this one, but the sky is better in this one, but this has got a bit more magenta in it, but we've got it really close anyway. So what I will do is, I know I shouldn't because this is 50% grey, but I know that this isn't, so I'm just going to actually slightly adjust it. So I'm going to go to my mid-grey, because this is actually primer. I know it's probably got, let's go to my hue saturation value and... Car Prime is notoriously slightly blue and lighter. So I know it's not the same, but it's it's slightly off. It's very close for like eight pound primer. But um, yeah, I'm fairly happy with that. We've got our HDRI lined up. Um, we've done some really basic lighting. Um, oh, let's actually do our color chart before we forget. And it's probably gonna look awful, so. Just gonna pull off to the side and sort out my screen. So I'm just gonna line this up somewhat better. Obviously, I probably should have just measured it and uh, done it that way, but it's too late now. I've already done it the hard way. <laughs> Let's change our uh, thing to object as well. That might help. Cool. So we don't actually have to have that on top. We can just... In fact, I've made such a mess of this, sorry. No. Cool. So... That was a mess. Anyway, so let's update our render scene. Update full render scene. And I don't think we're in the actual... <laughs> that might help. So let's bring that down. Cool. So, I've got some problems here. It's slightly darker, but it shouldn't be an issue. So, let's just double check our standard surface. Let's actually put this on one so it's on maximum. I think that's correct. And on raw, because we're in a raw. Yeah, so it's likely we just need to bring up our brightness, exposure, or not, so, oh, what are you doing, doggy? 
Okay, so this is... See quite a lot brighter now, but um, I don't want to go too much into this. We're going to leave this as one, and for what it is, I think the colours are, are, are pretty close. And it's probably, it's not far off, it's not perfect by any means. Um, it's obviously way more exposed than here, it's probably because we've got some clipped. But, um, and we have changed this, which we probably should have done that afterwards, doing this. So it's probably, and I know you shouldn't really be changing this to match. Um, it's because this is not, I can't say what. That is, unless I get it colour checked. And... I wonder if that changes. I don't think that should change that. Because that should still be... Correct. we didn't do it as aces cg we just left it as linear and just run it as aces so i'm just going to leave that as it is i know this is quite overexposed at the moment but our lineups are pretty good so i'm going to leave that as that and we've done some i know this is pretty basic and we're going to put our offset back and let's group that we'll just call this a uh, probes and we don't really need those for now so so I'm just gonna go to my perspective I'm gonna just hide my HDRI for now and I'm gonna bring back my layout geo and my post viz so I'm just gonna go file import and go to Data, look dev, my uh, bird box asset final. And because I've done it as an MA, it should bring in all the shaders as well. Cool. And it's here. So all I want to do is line this up to our post viz because that's where we decided it would be best. And this is just a really basic. This is not, we're not doing any integration because ideally you would, if you were doing this for a project, you would have to focus on a lot of integration as well, like how this is sticking to the tree, and maybe adding twigs and stuff. Um, but yeah, it's, um, we're just putting it on there for now and uh, it's slightly different. And what we'll do, we'll just try and line it up as close as we can to our post because that does matter. Because that's obviously part of the plan. And you want to stick to your plan because it makes things a lot easier. Although I think we have made our black box a little bit bigger than I remember. So I'm going to hide my previs. And just poke out quite a bit more. Um, so I'm going to go to my render cam. And we've placed it roughly in the same place. And what I will do is freeze the transforms on that. So now I know it's in that correct place. And then the next thing that I want to do is select my layout geo. And you can do this in multiple ways. You could trim this off and have this um, rendering straight onto it. Um, we're not gonna do that. We're just gonna right click, add new material. Arnold and add a shadow map. 
Like I said, we're just going to try and keep this as simple as possible. Cool. So basically, that's what that's going to do. That's not going to render any of this, and it's just going to capture all the shadows. And I think we might need to... Uh, let's leave let's leave all of this on apart from and see what it looks like basically so this should have our shader on already cool and now all we should really need to do is go to Arnold render view let's bring back our sky dome light all right this is not a full-on lighting tutorial like I say if you want if you want a full-on lighting tutorial, you're, you're best off popping over to Arvid Schneider's page. This is just something that's really quick and get you going with um, sort of samples of all the pipeline, really. But um, hopefully when we put this in, it should. We are looking through the element camera, so make sure you're looking through the right camera. Otherwise, uh, it will be floating. Even though it looks pretty good, even in the wrong one. <laughs> So let's update full scene. Cool. So now it's a little bit different from the one in, in the thumbnail because we just made this as we went along. But it's sitting in the scene really well. These are... Uh, does look a little bit washed out. And I think that's possibly the texture. But you kind of also still can do a secondary sort of look dev in here. And what I will do is just go to my color. I think there's a hue saturation on here, so. Because in reality, we would really want to sort of add some bits in here because it doesn't look super integrated and that's the key thing for realistic vfx is making it integrated really nicely so we're missing out on some stuff here could also be because maybe i haven't <laughs> i completely forgot setting up our so go, we'll need to go to Windows and Preferences. Let's check our color management. And we'll just leave this as it is for now. Because um, I don't want to put any OCI configs, um, and you might not have them in yours. But um, let's leave it as it is for now. Let's just keep keep this really basic. So I'm just going to go to my color. It is doing something. So I think it might be all right to be honest. It's just old wood. Darken it down a little bit. Because it's quite dark. Our shadows are quite dark under our arms of our trees. So I'd imagine it's probably quite dark under there. So we don't want it. And this is a lot of stuff that you can do in comp with AOVs afterwards. But it's nice to get it as close as you can in CG first. So... I don't even think we've really tweaked it that much. We just made it a little bit lighter. And I feel that's working pretty well. So I'm just going to drag this off to the side. And I'm just going to see how this is sat on the tree and see if we can make this look a little bit, position it a little bit better for some. And this is where you would have more creative sort of lighting. Like, 
when you're working, if you're working as a lighter, very unlikely that you're going to just be able to just stick a HDR on it and go. But we can work on the integration if you want. But um, I just want to keep it really simple. And what I will do is go to my render settings. And we're not rendering AOVs, but I do want to render specular. And there's loads that you can choose from, but I just want to use things that are going to help me right now. Shadow. I think it's just the shadow that we want. So I'm just going to render a big full scene just so we can see. The effects. Cool, so our spec is working relatively well. It's pretty specular all over, it's this wood, right? So um, I think I selected the wrong one for the shadow, so let's go back and This is only just so we can check it. It's nothing, we're not gonna render these. I think I got the wrong one. <laughs> so I'm just gonna update full scenes. It's probably gonna be a quite a quick tutorial. Um, So we can sort of see how our shadow mat's working. Either way, we don't need to do that. So, cool. where is our render cam? Have I accidentally hidden my Where's my image playing on? Is that, I think, my... Let's change it to one. time sometimes but once it's done it once cool so yeah so we're I'm feeling we're pretty much done with this so yeah um, we've just placed it in we've done some really basic lighting our next step would be to render it so that'll be a, a really quick tutorial so yeah so we've just all we've done is aligned our HDRI and um, uh, our balls and put our color chart in and matched it up and we haven't really done any super complex lighting we've just made sure our HDR is in the correct orientation and you can see how much it helps but obviously we have a lot of stuff that we would need to add for integration such as like twigs and branches and stuff like that so yeah we're just keeping it basic so don't worry about that too much in your next project you can do that so I hope you guys have enjoyed this tutorial on it's been it's, it's it's very quick, but um, and it's only really just lining up HDRI, but it's, it gives you a good idea of what the balls are for and all that sort of stuff. So, if you've enjoyed this tutorial, hit that like button and subscribe for more like this.